with Gary McLean. Earlier this year, the chef joined the landlord team to show us what he could do with some of his favourite ingredients. Last year's Master Chef, the Professionals Champion, is back now and he's taking the road to the Isles to see what Mull has to offer. As a chef, ingredients mean everything to me and there's nothing more exciting than tracking down the very best flavours from their source. And that's why I've come to Mull, which is gaining a reputation for its food and drink. Wow. I'm on a mission to hunt down the very best of the island's produce. I'm heading to the far west near the Alva Ferry to meet a lady who has one of the finest haggis recipes in the world. Restaurateur Jeanette Cutlack makes the only handmade haggis produced for sale in Argyle. Hello, Jeanette. I want to use some of it in my own kitchen. But it starts, of course, with some of Mull's finest ingredients. So, Jeanette, what have we got here? Uh, we've got some offal, yep. uh, lungs and hearts from a sheep. Mull has its own community abattoir, so these ingredients really are local and fresh. I know that all the sheep um, and animals that come through, go through the slaughterhouse, um, are going to have come from the island. I know some of the farmers personally, and, and I know how well they treat their animals. Yeah. Um, I know that they use a lot of native breeds um, and that all helps to create a better flavour. Yeah. I mean, I know that those lungs came from Glen Gorm. Yeah. But, um, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So we'll get really, really simple ingredients, our oatmeal, our suet. That's right. Our plucks. That's and it. obviously the key is probably the spice, would you say? Oh, absolutely, that what he makes, yeah. makes it magical? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as soon as you put the cooked, minced offal in with the other ingredients, you it suddenly smells like yeah, haggis. Yeah, it just it's becomes just, yeah, it's iconic. Yeah, yeah. And Jeanette's even letting me have a go. First thing is to cook the heart and the lungs. So nothing else in here, no seasoning? Or... Not yet. No, not no, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Pop that onto the heat. And we can get on with everything else. So why haggis? Why haggis? Um, there was a bit of a gap in the market at the time um, on Mull for, for haggis. Yeah. I offered to make the haggis for the for the local school's burn supper. I like learning new skills um, and I hate to see things go to waste. Um, so I gave it a go and uh, it worked. And um, about you know a year later, I actually started doing it properly and doing it very well. The dry ingredients are mixed with my chopped onion and suet. Okay, I'm just going to put some water in this. Yeah. Um, we can use the cooking liquid, that's fine. I'll probably just use that much. I um, like that style of cooking, good fun. Yeah, <laughs> mud pies. Okay, go. right now the meat's going to go in. The smell coming off this is incredible. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, that's all the spices. Why isn't everyone making haggis? I know, isn't it good fun? And my next challenge, getting it in the casing. I suppose the, the enemy here is air, isn't it? I say, you've got to get it out. It's a million dollar question, how do you stop them bursting? Giving it a slight prick. Um, oh, really? So that you actually put a hole in it? I do, oh, yeah. Right. right, so how are we looking? That's Apart from being a bit messy. It looks like, it looks like haggis, yep. An hour and a half in the pot, and the great chieftain is ready. So are you going to do the honours then? Do you mind? I really like doing this bit. Oh. Look at that. Can we try it? Let's go for it. Get in there. This is even better, but... That's absolutely incredible. Can I have some to take back to my class at college and, and then turn that into a spectacular dish? Oh, yeah. I hope you do it justice. And so do I. Two guesses, what have we got here? Haggis. Haggis. I'm going to do a modern twist on a traditional Scottish favourite. We're going to do some, some classic mashed potato. We're going to actually incorporate some neeps into the dish. Probably going to do it a wee bit differently than you've seen before. I'm just going to use what's called a solferino scoop. It's a tiny, tiny little melon baller. 
So we're going to par cook them and then we're just going to roast them off. So next thing guys is we're going to start working with the haggis and we're going to wrap it in free de break pastry. So it's a wee bit like phyllo but it's more robust. So all I want to do now is just roll the haggis in the pastry. I'll just pop that in. And what we want to do with this is just keep turning. In go the neat balls. And in a few minutes, it's ready to serve. Along with the red onion chutney, those little balls are just going to just add a, a, a completely different texture. And then our haggis. And what it does is it'll give it height and to finish, a drizzle of red wine sauce. So you guys tuck in, grab that. I think the mash is like, so good. And the turnips have got really nice nuttiness to them. Yeah. That's really nice spice to it. Sorry, Sauce. no one else is getting this. That mash. Well, that was haggis wrapped in pastry with creamy mash, sweet and sour onion chutney, roasted turnip and red wine sauce. Is that any more? Have you enjoyed that? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think he enjoys the most. <laughs> I think so. All right, mate. And Gary will be discovering some more of Mull's finest produce next week. And here's what else is on the programme. That is fantastic. What a view. And on the lookout for CE.